All right, so the three of you, please, it's your show now. Thank you. Awesome. And I am sharing my screen. Let's see if it comes on. Great. Um, hi, everyone. Thanks for uh, sticking around. There's been a lot of awesome talks so far. And this talk, uh, it's going to be me. I'm Dahlia. I am a product manager on the Java at Microsoft team. And I'm joined by my two awesome co-speakers, cool Yolan and Teresa. Let them introduce themselves. Right, so I'm Yolande Poirier, and um, I'm uh, actually a manager at Neo4j. I have a, um, I'm managing a team that is uh, of community managers. But so just for historical um, purposes, a couple of years ago, I was at uh, Oracle, and I was a community manager for the Java community. And so I know uh, pretty much uh, if, or some of the speakers here, but a lot of the work that I did then is also coach people to uh, contribute content to all our web properties. So there was like blog articles, videos, and also I was uh, we were running um, a track, a community track at Java One, so helping people also to build their skills and and become speakers for the first time. So all those best practices that I learned uh, with the Java community. I'm trying to build a team that can do that at Neo4j. So that's uh... great. Um, I'm Teresa Wynn. I'm uh, also a product manager uh, with the uh, Java Microsoft team. So I've done my stint in the uh, kind of open source startup world, uh, working on two application servers. The uh, if you remember back then, about 15 years ago, the Resin application server, and also recently uh, the Tommy Tribe application server. Now I'm with the Java engineering team working on tooling. So I'm glad to be here to talk a little bit about, you know, what it's like to have a career in Java and also uh, different um, points in your life, basically. You know, you, not everybody here has done 20 years of programming uh, in Java, but, you know, how do you get started and things like that? So hopefully this session will help everyone out. Yeah, I, I got really excited when I was invited to this session because I've been a Java developer for many years. Um, I had a, a very fulfilling career, first as a developer, individual contributor, then a developer lead, and then a, a developer advocate, and now a product manager. And it was all within the Java ecosystem. So I thought it would be really cool if we could come in and talk about some of the roles that are available and some of the skills that you need in order to continue within your career journey to have a more fulfilling uh, career. So one of the first questions I ran into was, um, I've been in my role for many years, what's next? I remember being a developer, I had delivered a bunch of code, fixed a bunch of bugs, and just kind of became a cycle. And I was wondering, you know, what's next for me? Um, what do I want to be doing? Like, I, I wasn't enjoying my role as much, and I wanted to see what else is out there but I didn't know where to start. One of my favorite ways to start having that conversation is asking myself, what have I enjoyed doing so far within the career I've had? So for example, when I was a developer lead, I had an opportunity to go out to conferences and speak to developers and bring back some of the product in, insight that I got from the developer and talk to the pro product teams. And I later discovered there's an actual role for that, which is developer advocacy. And I decided to pivot into that role. And it's been kind of one of those things that I've done on a kind of semi-regular basis where if I feel like my career has stalled, I reflect back, I figure out what have I really enjoyed about what I've done so far and how can I do more of that? And I know this, that's just one example of how I've done it. So we wanted to dive a little bit more deep, deeper into how to make that decision. And Teresa is gonna first help us with that. Great, thanks Dahlia. So, you know, getting to know yourself and your career ambition, I'm sure everybody have thought of this at one point in time in, the, in their life. Um, so let's take a quick tour into the career clarity. And, you know, thanks to COVID the last two years, I'm sure a lot of you had a lot of time to reflect on life, family, priorities, and even careers. So I want to share, I take this opportunity to share with you some of the things that I think are important. Uh, you know, the goals and the aptitude, you're probably familiar with that, your goals in life. You're already a Java developer. So you probably during COVID thinking, what's next for me? Do I want to continue being a developer or not? 
your aptitude. Uh, it's, you know, this kind of encompasses your natural skills, your talent, your education, all everything that you want to put down your CV. So, but maybe instead of thinking of it uh, as a KPI, think of it as a KPT, like, What's your knowledge base? What are your personal traits? And what kind of transferable skills you have? Um, these are important things to know, but let's step beyond that and look at some other things that are interesting. What, I mean, this can be your interests, your values, your personalities. These are things I don't think a lot. we spend a lot of time taking a look at or even talking about it, but these are the important elements that uh, helps you in terms of prioritizing your decisions and choices. And your personality is important because, you know, things like, as we had discovered last a few years, work culture, maybe working from home is more productive for you instead of going to the office, or maybe you're an extrovert or an introvert, you know, how does this help you accelerate your career? So let's now take a look at um, how do you expand your skills and interests to match your career? So knowing yourself is just kind of like the beginning. Uh, you already have your skills, there's constant learning, but let's go into, uh, no, what else can you do to align your priorities and get your career going? So that's why I mentioned earlier, the interest in personalities and values are important because in here you have everything that you need for your CV to get your next job. But in today's uh, open source or in today's technology, open source is being used everywhere. Um, so why won't you just leverage the open source and build it into your career path? Um, this is something that you can contribute to, grow your career, uh, help build a healthy ecosystem, um, and you know, take advance to the next level. Um, as, and if you're not really good at self-assessment, then consider taking the Meyer Briggs exam. It's uh, free, it's online, or you can do it as a professional development and it'll help you assess your own attributes and career path. Um, so now let's take a look at some career consideration based on the premise of you knowing yourself and what kind of career path you might want to consider. So in here, if you want to, uh, if you're in engineering already and want to stay there, you don't have to continue being a developer if you want to take a look outside to see if there's other suitable options. Um, you can look into product management or being a TPM or even UX design. All this can leverage the skills you already have and then further skills that maybe you want to acquire. Uh, if you go into the cloud, you know, going into information technology, learning about networking, um, platforms, architecture, uh, storage, all that. It's more product-based, but it really does help you advance your career as people are looking into you know, what kind of cloud options are there. And if you find yourself as being an extrovert and you want to maybe reach out the community, do less behind the keyboard pecking and more of talking, sharing your knowledge, doing demos, then an outreach role such as DevRel or product marketing is more suitable. Um, so all these are not, um, they're not an exhaustive list of career paths, but these are options you should maybe consider as you are learning about yourself. And of course, if you want maybe to be in a less uh, technical role, but have the techno foundation to advance your career, business strategy is also a good option to look at. And this can be anything from legal to um, uh, business development and so this is, just keep in mind, these are options to, on how to take your career, career to the next level. So let's see what we can do here. Um, so if you're a Java developer and you wanna continue and let's see how we can use open source technology to help you advance your career. So open source, it's, it's like any other product. It's a software, it needs innovation, it needs maintenance, uh, it needs contribution. So you using, using open source, uh, you can take it further and contribute and get more out of it. Uh, you know, it's like an accomplishment uh, and where the the field is leveled out. You don't have managers. You don't have higher ups telling you what to do. You're basically your own boss. You contribute whatever you want to contribute. Um, and there's, I listed here some ways of, uh, I'm sorry, I listed here some uh, projects. So the two main ones are Eclipse and Apache Foundation. Um, those you can start exploring what kind of projects are in there. Um, Jakarta EE and MicroProfile more of a standards body. So if you want to maybe work on standards instead of particular projects, you can start looking to that. And I've listed some other projects here like Kafka, Tommy, or JMeter, or Spark. If the important part here is if you're already working uh, on a product at your company that utilizes open source, 
start looking at these projects, you might be able to get a start in open source that way. And as you're starting to look at open source, uh, just remember the four pillars of open source is use, contribute, um, and uh, <laughs> use and contribute and, uh, and give back to the foundation. So um, let's look at the 10 ways you can contribute, contribute to open source. All right, I'm not gonna go through all this. And thanks Emma Irwin from the Microsoft uh, Open Source uh, Program Office. Uh, she supplied here a link here where you can go find out more 10 different ways or eight different ways to add a few more to uh, start uh, contributing. So <clears throat> here, you don't have to always contribute code You contribute in different ways like marketing, governance, even diversity and inclusion. Um, there's so many ways you can do this. But so what do you do now? I know some of you guys are already contributing, but there are those out there early in the career that haven't started contributing yet. Uh, first off, you should create a GitHub account. Uh, once you do that, you can go in there, browse around some projects, start looking at, you know, you can search under topics like Java or search under the libraries that you're already currently using. Start looking at uh, also larger projects because there's gonna be more people and more likely you'll get help in that way. So, and then once you go in there, you can start checking out, you know, some of the um, the contributing guidelines. It's important if there isn't one, you can look at the README. It'll give you some guidelines, some insights in terms of how to commit your first PR. Um, and before you start committing things, raise an issue or take a look at some of the discussion in the community. It will help you uh, understand what the what's important and what's not important. Then move it to an issue before you start working on it and then commit your first PR because you don't want to commit something that people are not ready to uh, maybe take action on. So, and remember open source is not a, uh, it's a marathon. So don't cram, don't think that you have to do open source every day, every week. You can do it, you know, once in a while. And plus it's not a weekend or an evening job. You can bake this into your day job. So don't cram. Just continue to contribute. And uh, another way to also further your career with open source is look at the future employer. If they're using a certain type of open source technology in their project, maybe start contributing to that uh, project. It'll give you some visibility, give you some experience. Um, and when they're ready to maybe open up a, a role in their project, you can apply and get you know up on the list of uh, interviews. So in short, uh, join a community, join a discussion, help evolve open source projects, and it will evolve your CV. So now that you know how to contribute uh, to open source projects, consider more than code contribution. You can also create content for the ecosystem. So let's hear what Yelan have to say about content creation. Okay, so how do you create good content? So I've seen a lot of people struggling with like how to get started. And so this is where my coaching, uh, this is really based on my coaching experience. So what I found is that a lot of people don't spend enough time, first of all, researching topics, right? And it has, and you want to make it easy. So you have to look at what you're doing today. Like what kind of topic would be easy for you? Are you like working on a cutting edge or technologies like or something that people really look for, like microservices, for example, or the la latest Java release, right? But if you're not, then you can also look at open source projects or what you're doing there or what people are also really looking for. Like uh, there is always a demand for new people coming to Docker and they don't know what to do, for example, or the complexity of Kubernetes. Um, you know, you can certainly find something uh, there that you, and as you learn, you can also share that learning experience. So that would be more of a beginner uh, kind of process. So you don't have to be an expert to contribute content. That is very important. Uh, because what I've seen is like people think of like uh, writing a book, for example. Well, you don't start there, right? You start with like a small blog or even code or something much um, sm much smaller. So once you decide roughly like what kind of area you want to, you're comfortable or you're interested. So you have to look at what uh, is out there. So who are, who is actually talking about those topics? What kind of 
content they are producing, what works, what doesn't work, right? I mean, everything is on social media. So there is more than you can uh, learn if you, so it's unlimited, the content, uh, the research that you can do, but restricted to, you know, like check the Java champions, you're in the Java ecosystem. So who is actually producing that, that content? Look also at... Um, what is trending? So you have micro trends like uh, AI and ML, but you also have um, macro and micro. So this is the micro, it would be like quarkers. So something a lot smaller, but that is just in the ecosystem. Understand why those trends are happening. What kind of problems are, there, are people looking to solve? And once you have that answered, you will see like, a lot more opportunities, things that you never thought about. So once you've done that, make sure you pick a type of content you want to produce. Don't try to do everything at once. Pick one. Are you more comfortable doing videos? Are you more comfortable writing? Or do you say, well, no, I want to do neither, right? i rather code. Then in that case, go back to uh, open source uh, project, for example, or or contributing to technologies that uh, you care about, right? So, again, smart uh, start smart, start small and simple, right? So, um, next, um, Daria. So, and the research is not done, right? Step four is test your ideas. So once you have kind of an idea of what you want to do. Run it by people, run it by your team, run it by your jug members, run it at conferences, like maybe there are, there are conferences, buffs, for example, where you can have the discussions. But make sure you discuss it, because as you are discussing this idea that you want to develop, people are going to give you suggestions. They'll suggest other tools that you can use. They'll say, no, um, we we tried this, but it didn't work. And you, know, you will learn a lot. And all that learning, you can actually integrate it in your content that you're going to produce. And, um, and you can thank also people that contributed to that content and ask them to push to help you promote this wonderful content that you promoted as a result, right? You created as a result. So you see that um, now I'm in step five and you still haven't uh, written pretty much anything. So this is those four steps are very important to design your content. Once you start creating that content, still make it very simple, focus on a problem. Maybe you can do a series of blogs. So, but the blog that you, the first blog that you write, make it very simple. Think and the structure for most uh, technical content is problem, solution, and result. I mean, conclusion, right? But very focused. They all have the same um, format, right? If you want to do something, if you're doing like a career change, then maybe you have like a series of uh, advice that you can share or product comparison. So that depends also on the career change that you want to, um, to do, but be very focused. Lastly, step six is I get a lot of people who ask me, well, should I have my own blog or should I um, or not? And my recommendation is certainly you can have your own blog because it's good for your brand, but you could, should also consider all the other uh, aggregate website where we, you can um, uh, share your content. So for example, all the companies I've been at, uh, we, we, we had either a medium or a dev that to a website um, or channel, I should say, and we accepted a community contribution. I've never seen people really contacting me and say, hey, I would love to contribute content to, to your site here. And that would make my job easy, actually. <laughs> so look for those opportunities because they do exist. It's just that people don't know and don't realize that. And also we are always looking for new, uh, beginners content. And because when you build a community, you're not just looking for people who are like, say, Java's champions, for example. You also want content that um, that beginners can start with. And the best people to create this beginner content are actually beginners. 
So this is important to have like um, different uh, people um, building content. And also all those companies out there, they also want more Java champions, right? I call them champions. Every company has their own advocacy program uh, today. So, but, so this is a starting point. So you start contributing content and then you become a champion eventually, right? Another uh, resource I want to mention is Fuji, because Fuji is also an in independent entity who is looking for content. So you should you should actually follow them on Twitter and also contact them and see um, and suggest a topic. They'll let you know. They the only thing they can do is say no. Right? Okay. Next slide because I think I'm running late. Okay, so now you have to also promote yourself, right? Okay, so promotion. I took this example because it's um, because this example, Vlad does such a good job of just showing who he is. And there's so much information in his uh, profile. So first of all, he has a big picture there, right? So we see him talk at a conference. So that means he's a speaker, right? The picture that he uses, he uses the same pictures everywhere. So if you want to find him on a different platform, you just look for his picture, you'll find him. He uses his name. Yes, no funny name. It's, uh, I've, seen, I've seen like very people who are top contributors not using their real name, making something funny. And, you know, I've seen them, their, their network grow a lot slower as a result. And then his description, he gives you, so he's a Java champion. So he gives you like his credential, right? He's a Java champion, he's an author. And then he tells you exactly what he's going to talk about. And so you know exactly why you are following this person. And so for you, for your profile, you have to tell people what you are going to talk about because that's the reason why they should follow you. Sounds obvious, but it's actually super important. And for people like me, who are looking for people to recruit, to engage and grow my community, this is, one, this is a wonderful profile because I know exactly who is and I can actually reach out to you and, um, and invite you to my community and to contribute. Okay, then the lot of what I hear also is like a, people have uh, will tell you it's too complicated. Social media is takes too much time. I don't know what to do, right? I don't have like ten more hours to spend on social media and chit chatting with people. I totally agree, and you shouldn't have to do that either. So what he does, he's um, so first of all, his style is totally straightforward. Right? It's one sentence. It tells you exactly what you're going to get, right? You get tips. Well, here it is. It's in the title, right? You see in the URL that actually is directing you also to his own blog, right? That's also important to have just like a URL that shows you what where you are going to land. He does a lot. He does a lot of, um, he answers a lot of questions on uh, Stack Overflow. And so you can see it. He actually shares it. On social media. So this is also important. Don't reinvent and start looking for content on social media and, in, and invent a different stream. No, talk about what you are doing, right? Integrate that into your workflow and, and show people what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. So integrate this strategy. The other thing, the third post that he has in, in here is actually his GitHub project. And uh, because he contributes to Ibernate types, I think it's his own project actually. But same thing, it just tells you what it is. It doesn't get into any emotional consideration or whatever else. And the screenshot that he has are also just directly related to the content that, uh, that uh, he's uh, talking about. So make it simple. If you remember nothing, just like find a way. There is always a way to make it simple and simpler, you know, so. Awesome. Thanks, Yohan. So I know we have a, uh, just a few, a couple of minutes left. So I'm just going to wrap it up here with some next steps. So after the stock, what should you do? I highly recommend the first step is to just sit down grab a pen and, uh, and paper or your laptop or whatever, and think back to your career. Think about 
what have you enjoyed doing so far? What are some of your interests? What are some of the values? All the things that Teresa talked about. And write some of those down. For example, when I was a developer, I really liked the design process of software. So I was thinking, oh, maybe an architect would be interesting. Or like, you know, do you like uh, to contribute to open source? Would you like to work on a different project? What kind of, what you know, what area would you like to work in? You know, JPA or something else. Um, just sit down, figure out what would be really interesting to work on next. Second step is to look at the slide that we had with Teresa had all those roles and map some of those interests to those roles and figure out would that make sense uh, or would that bring me joy? Would I like to be a software architect? Would I like to be a developer advocate? Would I like to contribute to this open source project? Third step is gonna take the longest, which is to build those skills. Because when you're coming from a developer role to another developer role, it's, it's kind of easier to demonstrate that you've done that role. But if you're pivoting from one role to a different role, like product management or architect or whatever, you need some way to demonstrate that you've done that work or you can do that work. And some of the ways that you can do that is open source contributions. So you can follow Teresa's uh, recipe of contributing to your first bug, uh, contributing content, all that. Um, or you can follow uh, Yolan's uh, uh, recipe of contributing content around the areas of expertise that you'd like to be in. That's one way that I've demonstrated that I know Docker is creating a course around Docker, intro to Docker. And that attracted people to say that, oh, Dahlia has expertise in Docker. Fourth step, I know it's a little bit uncomfortable for people to promote themselves, but if no one knows that you've contributed so much great content out there, you've contributed this code or this content or this blog or this talk, you just, they won't be able to find you. So I highly recommend promoting your work. And this is where I'm gonna leave you. Thank you so much for attending this talk. And uh, we, uh, I hope you had a great time at JDConf. All right. Thank you, uh, Dalia. Thank you, Teresa, Yolande. Uh, I, wa I want to ask you a question. Um, I keep talking about YAML on Twitter. Is that the right thing to do to, to promote my content? Am I doing it right? I think Yolan has opinions about that. <laughs> Don't. Don't. Okay. All right. Thanks for the advice. Not following. <laughs> Well, all right. Thank you so much for this. This is great content, uh, and I think lots of developers uh, uh, really want to grow on that uh, uh, on that path. Uh, there are the kind of developers that you just want to get their job done, nine to five, go to the office, code and stuff, and it's okay as well. Some developers really want to grow to, or not necessarily not even grow, but really expand career options. And I think what you presented here allows them to open different doors and and, and pave different ways to grow their careers. And I think that is what matters. Like for those that want to do those things, how do they do that? And you just show that uh, uh, to the audience. So thank you so much. And uh, uh, we'll continue to connect over social media. Thanks, have a wonderful day. Thanks, Bruno. Thanks.